What's up guys, it's Derek here at D-Money's Garage. Today we're working on our buddy Spencer's SC. He's gonna tell you a little bit about what we're doing here. Yeah, so today we're doing a Starry Night headliner. Uh, we're gonna show you how to remove the headliner. Uh, I am changing the fabric to a black suede, so we'll show you how to or, uh, take the old fabric off and put the new one on. Show you how to poke holes, run the strands, plan it all out, um, how to put it all back together, and show you what it looks like after we're done. We have done stars on my car back there, the Subaru. It was a very long, tedious project. So make sure you guys watch the whole video through at least one time. We'll have the chapters here. So if you guys can need to go back or you're just trying to look for a certain spot, all but by all means, go ahead and do that. But just watch the video one time through. If you find this video helpful, please drop it a like. And let's get into it. All right, so some of the stuff you guys will be needing for this install, possibly an array of plastic pry tools. Spencer also picked up a LED kit from Amazon. We will have the link in the description. He went with 460 stars. This is the projector here. Inside the box, we have cables and extensions. Spencer is opting to do the cigarette outlet, so we will not be hardwiring this. But it comes with everything you want, whether you want to plug it in somewhere that uses just a normal outlet, if you want to do it in your house or something else, as well as it comes with the remote for the stars and it's got lots of different options. I have literally the same kit, but I have 20 extra stars. So it also has a QR code that you can scan and you can pull up an app and you can also do it from your mobile device. On top of that, we are gonna need some, say, tack pins, some sewing needles, something sharp that's gonna be able to poke and go through the fabric to get the fiber optic strands through it. We also are gonna need some Torx bits working on the ST. Later on in this video, you can use a nail clipper to cut off all the excess strands that's coming down from your headliner. We're gonna need some hot glue and some hot glue guns when you are putting the fiber optic, fiber optic on the back of the headliner, you do have to glue them down. You're gonna need something to use um, for the Torx bits or whatever you're using, and then a driver to put them through. And then Spencer picked up this black suede foam backed headliner. All this stuff for the most part will be in the description below if you guys are interested. You can also do so many different other options of fabric, whether you wanna do foam back, suede or anything. The endless possibilities, what you guys wanna go with. Uh, just to begin here, like a, any other vehicle, if you're doing a headliner install or a starry night headliner, remove uh, the positive side of the battery or the negative, just one side of the battery so airbags don't go off. So, in the focus, most people should know where the battery is. I'm just gonna remove the positive side here. There we go. Now we'll start on the headliner. So to take this part out, which is the sunglass holder, the top center console, upper center console, whatever you want to call it, we have to remove this piece first, which is all your your, uh, your sunroof controls. And for me, I have the ST3, so I got my lights and the ambient control or uh, ambient lighting controls, the dimmer switch, and all that. And your microphone should be up here for your your hands-free calling and all that. So to do that, we'll cut to a new. Uh, angle here, but there's gonna be a little channel here. And that channel, you wanna take a pry tool and stick it in there and you'll hit a clip. And once this is out, we'll show you the clip that we're talking about. So this channel that I'm talking about is right here. You'll see these little like rubber bushings to help protect when the sunglass holder or uh, sunglasses holder closes. Um, there's a channel here and there's these clips here that you have to get a pry tool on and push them in. And this thing will just drop out from the bottom. You have to pull it down, but it'll drop down. You can pull it out. This thing will come down like this. And then you have one uh, clip right here, which is just a little push tab. That should release. And then you can just let this hang. Uh, the microphone is attached to there right here and just let it dangle for a little bit. So the next part is taking these little tabs off. You have to get behind there. You can use either plastic pry tool or we use some picks. Uh, just get behind there and kind of pry it off of this little white wedge here. Uh, the ones when they are while they are attached look like this and that's what they'll look like when they're unattached. And then you can sit there, take it from the outside 
and you can pry it off. Or the front clips that we were talking about are right in this little slot here. If you can kind of see them, they're similar to these back ones here. Uh, you can use a pick with a slight like 45 degree angle. You might be able to get a straight pick in there. Uh, we used a 45 degree and we were able to just to pry those straight off. You'll have it on both sides. Excuse me. You'll have it on both sides here, right underneath the light. They sit about right there. And yeah, just two more clips. Also be careful with the computer system and the chips that are in the car. You don't want to damage these guys. Yes, otherwise your lights will not work. So we got those four clips off. Uh, once again, the two on the light here, and there's two right here. Right here, you can see the two here. After you pull this off, there's some Velcro that'll hold this in. You can kind of hear it now. So after you get the Velcro there, you'll have another clip right here. There's a little push tab right where my left uh, index finger is. Push it out and you are good. So now just be careful of those two boards there. Let that dangle. Now I got this piece out. So those two clips here are like right here. You can see them here. I just want to pull those out. Uh, fortunately for me, this one was easy. It was broken already. So I don't know if this was ever replaced on my car before, but uh, yeah, I'll uh, move on to the next step. There's also, if you want to see inside here, you can see this point here of that clip as well as the point here. And then again, the two that are back here that are the same exact like these. So a total of four and then the Velcro. So the next thing we got to do is remove this door weather stripping, rubber seal, whatever you'd like to call it. So I'll pull that out of the way. And we have these two interior pieces here. So there's a seam right here. On the other side, there'll be an airbag plate you have to pull off and get in there with a flathead screwdriver or a pick. It'll say airbag, very apparent uh, rectangular oval around it. Pull it off and it should be a T20 bolt behind there. You remove this airbag. Uh, you can either use a flathead screwdriver. Uh, you just need to get in there in the corners and pry. Um, I'm going to cut to it as it's removed and I'll show you the back side of it so that way you can see what you need to do to pry it off. After taking this little airbag piece off here, it says airbag, uh, the back side is just some little little clips. So if you kind of pull from the side here, you can pull it out or from the top, it'll come out easier. Uh, I don't know if there's a cover right here or not that just fell after we pulled this off, but the first time we pulled it off, there wasn't uh, a hole here. So there might be a cover, just be aware of that. Uh, if there is, just pull it down. But yeah, these are held in with a T20. bolt out. We can just start pulling at the trimming here. So I get that side pulled off and then we can start at the seatbelt side. So now that that T20 bolt is gone, this should just pull right out of the trim pieces up here. And there we go. You can just let this rest back there. I just have a cable right here going to uh, my rear dash cam. So this won't be there unless you have a rear dash cam and routed it like I did, but there you go. So on the front passenger handle here, you'll have these little doors here, uh, just a little clip that will uh, fit into a little hole there. If you push them up uh, with a screwdriver or a pl plastic pry tool, you should be able to get them out. You have two sides here and they are a T20 it looks like. So I'll take this guy out. You'll have to hold the handle out. All right. So something that I always do when working on my car, anybody's car, make sure you guys organize all the parts that you're taking out of your car instead of just throwing them all in a pile. And then you're like, put it all back together and you're like, I'm missing stuff, I have extra stuff. So what I do is every time we take something off, it's a little OCD and overdone for some. I'm not gonna deny that, but every single thing we're doing, I'm labeling everything. So when it comes back to install, everything is ready to go. We know exactly what goes where, how many screws, whatever's going on. 
You can pick these things up, Amazon, Walmart, the dollar store, wherever really, and then just use painter's tape or something. And then when you're done, you just rip them off for the next time you're doing stuff. Metal trays work, other stuff. But when you're working with a lot of different bolts, screws, anything, it's nice labeling everything. So you just don't forget. All right, so the next part that we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this airbag cover off for the front A-pillar side off here. So I have some wires here just because uh, I have a dash cam that's routed out over here. So we're just gonna take that off. Should be enough for the headliner to squeeze out. Uh, the whole reason why we're starting with the pillars before we get to the um, sun visor and the handle um, was just because uh, there is a clip right here on the sun visor that needs to get disconnected so you can pull this off. And they're glued down along here on the back side of the headliner. And by doing that, you'll be able to get more room in there to get the clip off. It's just a lot easier that way. Uh, some might find it struggling, or some might find it, you know, a little harder to do what this uh, dangling, like we'll show you in a little bit here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the sun visors off. Uh, to do that, we just gotta take this little plastic shroud off, uh, get underneath there with the plastic pry tool again. And then there are two 215 Torx bits. But before we do that, we're gonna take this guy off. Back here, if you just stick your head under there, you'll be able to see it really easily. Just a T15 Torx. It'll come off just like that. See the Torx right there. And now we'll move back to here. We will take these two T15 Torxes out. And then my dash cam cable just fell, so no big deal. But as you can see, now we're kind of dangling here. And there is a uh, cable here, you can kind of see it. It's glued into place on the back side of the headliner. Uh, just make sure you don't pull on it from this side, otherwise you could ruin the headliner by chance. So get on the back side here, which we'll show in a second. So we're gonna be removing this clip right here. It might be easier if we can use uh, two sets of hands. So I'm having Spencer hold the headliner down a bit. And it's right here that's connecting to the sun visor. So if you see this right here, it's hot glued. And there's a little tab here you're gonna push down and then you can start sliding this out. And I'm just gonna push it a little bit more as this, this one's being a little unfriendly. And as you can see, it's a lot easier since everything here is glued down. So now that is unplugged and you could pull the glue up or pull it off the glue and just be careful with the headliner and the wires. So that's how you get this guy out. To mention this one part here, just cause we forgot to look up here, uh, but it's just the little coat hangers they have in the back of your car. So there's a little trap door here. We're just gonna take a little tiny screwdriver in here and we're gonna pry it open. And then it should be a T20 Torx bit. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta pull off the rear door trim now. Okay, and then we have to remove this little cover here, which I've already kind of started. Then we have a T20 Torx in there. So I'll pull that guy out. Cool. Then we can start pulling him off. My uh, rear cable for the uh, uh, rear dash cam is right there, but you shouldn't have that unless you routed it the same way I did. <clears throat> so we'll pull this guy down a little bit. Now this guy should have all the room to come out. And there we go. So the next thing we gotta do is remove these two T20 screws on the side panel here. If I can pull this bolt out. There we go. And then we have one more right here underneath the light. 
pull that guy out. Then we can start wrestling this out, but it might be easier if we pull off the trim here. So, if you can see that from here, you have a little light that's connected down into here. You can try and disconnect the ladder or just remove it in general. I'm just going to leave it attached for the moment. Just kind of move the seatbelt on. And then this guy right here should just come right out. And there we are. All right, uh, now that we got the rear trim pieces out and the trunk out, uh, now it's your turn to mimic the other side of the car. Uh, it's the exact same process, just on the left side or right side, whatever side you started on. Um, yeah, so no different. Uh, what we have left is the middle dome light and we have one pin in the rear and the headliner should be out. So for the dome light here, all we gotta do, I've kind of pulled it down a little bit. You take a screwdriver, just kind of pull it down and see this little metal plate here? You can get underneath it, like here. You can pull it up. Okay, uh, so to disconnect this piece, there is going to be a clip, so you'll have it hanging. You'll basically pull this front side down, and then it'll kind of hinge down. You kind of have to find a sweet spot here, and you can pull it out this way. The connector up inside here is glued down to the headliner itself, so you might need to get a screwdriver or a pry bar or something. You reach your finger in there like I did. Hold down at a little angle there and you can push these two red tabs out and it pulling them out. So from your side, they'll be sticking out like that. So you have these two little fingers here. I don't know if you can focus in on that, but um, yeah, there's gonna be two little rabbit ears. If you wanna push that forward, then there'll be a push tab that you can push down, which will be sitting right about where my fingernail is here. Push that down and it should just slide right out. So basically some of the last stuff now is these two clips here. I'm gonna use a pry tool here. I'm gonna go underneath these guys, pry these guys out. That's one. There's a second one. And you can see the headliner is already starting to fall right now. All right, so as you can see, we've got the headliner dropped now after removing all those pieces. Uh, the main thing to remember is you have uh, all these wires in here, if you can kind of see that. You'll also have your keyless entry sensor right here. Uh, it should just peel right off, um, no big deal. Uh, but all these wires are glued down. You can kind of see the track that the glue is laid that'll carry all the wires up. You can carefully pull them up and they'll just let go. Just do it, you know, with some generosity. Don't, you know, pull on them really hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, make sure you have the seats all pulled down and we can get ready to take it out. And then also make sure you guys connect your battery back so you can drop the power seats so then it's gonna be easy access to go through the hatch. Oh, yeah. Just don't then, push yet. Like this. It's gonna have to get bent a little bit. Is what it is. I feel like we should low key try pop this first. No, just keep going. Oh, right, we're going. Yeah, we're good. You're gonna have to bend a little bit, like here. Yeah, that's okay. fine. We're coming. Keep going. You kind of bend it like you push it on an angle. 
Oh no, look at that. All right, so for those of you guys who have a sunroof, we're gonna wanna drop this down because we're gonna be doing the fabric in this as well. Over here, there's gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. There's, it's mimicked on both sides, so we're gonna unloosen this guy. This guy's gonna drop out. We're gonna pry on this thing right here, down. And now the sunroof will be able to So when we're sliding this back with the slider here, just push up on the sunroof so it can clear this part right here when you're sliding it back. And then it might be easier. So Spencer and I are both gonna be holding it because it gets thicker. So you kind of need two people at the same time to really slide out the sunroof. All right, so because we're wrapping the, um, the sun visor here on the, uh, sunroof we need to take out this little plastic thing so that we can get the perfect seal so right here there's just four tabs uh, that kind of wrap around the edge here and what you'll do take a plastic pry tool screwdriver whatever you want to use and you can just push these in and this will pop right out So because we're applying a new material, we have to take the old stuff off. Um, so Ford uses this weird fabric with this really thin foam on the back. Uh, when you peel it, make sure you don't peel this white layer. There's two layers to it. Make sure you keep both layers and only peel the gray foam and the fabric. So yeah, we're just going to peel this off and we'll fast forward and check back in with you after we're done. All right, so from going inside, something you're gonna to wanna to do, if the foam is not coming off, you're gonna to wanna to use a wire brush and make sure, just like we were doing, scrub everything off. We're gonna use a vacuum here and we're gonna suck all this stuff off and try to just scrape as much as we can to get a clean working space. So that's gonna be the next step. All right, so we're gonna be laying the headliner material now. We're gonna be starting in the middle and then we're gonna make our way back this way. We're gonna be starting on this side because there's a lot more to contour compared to the other side. So in case we need more slack, we can pull it back. Yeah, so what we're gonna use is this Permatex heavy duty automotive headliner adhesive. Uh, picked this up on Amazon, uh, I think for 28 bucks, relatively cheap for a headliner adhesive. Um, it's high, uh, highly resistant to extreme temperatures and moistures and it shouldn't stain, so it should dry clear. So if you do get a little bit on there, it should be okay. Um, yeah, it's specifically designed for doing this application, which is headliners. I also use the 3M headliner spray. It was the red can or the burgundy can. And I had issues over a while that I have to fix on my Subaru. So it, 
uh, around this area, it started sagging, whether it was just because we didn't do enough and it was just user error, or if it was just from temperature changes and when we were doing it. So we're gonna try this guy out instead, and this guy has good reviews as well, so we'll see how long it holds up for. Yeah, we'll uh, link the stuff in the description below. It is day two working on the headliner. Spencer's finishing up over there, cutting and trimming. We just made all the relief cuts for on top of the headliner. So make sure you guys go ahead and do that. We just got a couple more areas to tuck and trim on the back piece. There was a bunch of foam, as you can see, blocks. We took all that off. So when we lay down the stars, it is not in our way. Make sure you guys go ahead and do that. And then the next step is you're gonna see us, we're gonna lay it probably in fours, and you're gonna see us marking out all the spots for the 460 stars that's going in. We are not gonna be doing the sunshade. We're gonna be opting out of that, but the fabric is done in it.
So after laying out all the stars, you can see that we divided the headliner into multiple sections. We did the back, we did the sides, we did the front. I just grabbed the paper plate because why not? We kind of did the math of about how much percent of what area the headliner to lay out how many stars and then went back and forth. The biggest thing is realistically, right? There's gonna be more people seeing this or just more space. So you're gonna want more stars up here. You also gotta keep in mind that there is gonna be the sun visors here. It is nice if you flip them down, you can still see stars. So I wouldn't neglect that part, but I would be careful and kind of start in the corners and work in just because you're gonna run out of stars. You know, this is 460 stars and it went like that. It goes by fast. Now, the next step we're gonna do is we gotta poke holes through all these guys. So you can just use a safety pin and I'll show you an example. A regular sewing needle might be too small. So I'm gonna be poking one right here through the top. You're just gonna go down and then you're gonna see the needle right here by my finger. So just like that, we gotta do this 459 more times. And then the next part after that is gonna be feeding all the fiber optics. So this is gonna take a little bit. This is a very tedious project. It's not the hardest thing, it's just, it's just very time consuming. Now that we mapped out all the stars, where they're going, we poked all the holes through already. On this specific star kit, depending on which one you get, there's different size strands. So there's a small, medium, a large, and luckily they have them taped off for us already. On my kit, they did that as well. So this is beneficial because we're gonna spread out the big ones, small and mediums. I have zip ties here just so when we're working and they're all over, we can kind of tie them up loosely when we're trying to work because it's gonna get it's gonna get messy. We also have another needle here that we're using to poke through because some of the bigger strands might need to get poked through more. So make sure you keep holding on to that. So we have these three separate. I'll show you guys an example. So you're gonna take the strand and you're gonna go through a hole. You're gonna put that guy through. And again, some of these are gonna have to get poked bigger depending on the size of the strand. So you're just gonna pull that through, give it some slack. It's gonna look messy. Once this is through, just leave it here. We're also something that we're gonna do, which we would recommend. Since he, Spencer is going to have the box come this way on the driver's side when this is up, he wants all the slack to go down here where the projector is going to be. So we want a lot of slack. So we're going to start going to the sides and we're going to start up in this corner and we're going to go around the sunroof. So we're going to start here and spread out. And then again, we're going to do big strands over here and kind of start putting those out, small strands. So it has a variety of how big the fiber optics are. So we will time lapse and show you guys us putting all these in. Again, it's a time consuming process. It is what it is.
Okay, so now that we've gotten all the strands uh, poked through the headliner, we've poked all the holes, we've got all the strands run through. You can see our nice wire mess here. Raced our hot glue in, uh, getting everything perfectly in the headliner now so it won't pull out. Uh, to do that, uh, just for the front section from the uh, sunshade forward, we're just going to pull out this little bit uh, from the bottom so we have about, about this much excess on there. Then we're gonna start hot gluing. Now, you don't need a crazy amount, just a little bit like that. And yeah, that way they don't pull out and that way we have the slack to go around the sunshade and eventually, because we're starting at the top here, uh, our strand at the bottom there will have all of the length that we'll need to fish it through the rest of the car to our projector. So now that the hot glue is laid down, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna use zip ties and we're gonna kind of group these fiber optics together. So as you can see, instead of being all over here, that's not gonna work. So we're gonna group these and go through and say zip tie these so they can clear parts. They can clear parts like this and we're gonna go feed them around both sides and then we're gonna do that all the way to the end so all this stuff can get clumped up in some spots so it's not just all over and it's gonna clean it up before we go in and install it in the car. So you guys will see what that looks like.
so to make it a little easier, we're just gonna cut all these fiber optics down here so we have more slack kind of, or less slack like we got over here. And then we're gonna trim all these and the rest inside the car. So you could just use a normal cutter and Michaela's gonna be cutting. You could also use say nail clippers even. So probably in the car, we might even use some of these or some other clippers. We're just gonna cut the excess off just so it's easier to work with and then finish the up top. So Michaela's gonna go ahead and cut these off. We're just gonna hold it to make sure we get all these guys off and don't. All right, so it is day three of doing the headliner. We're now on reinstalling everything. First thing we're gonna do is throw this guy back in. If you haven't already, when you were doing, if you do do new fabric, make sure you guys trim on both sides for these three points here. It's gonna help slide on the rails. So this guy's gonna go in first. And also if you haven't already, make sure you guys just pop these back in. So these are gonna go on the two sliders and then there's a 10 mil bolts from earlier of uninstalling this so you're gonna have to get these guys on the rails and then you're gonna start pushing this guy in you're gonna have to kind of pull this black pat back uh black plastic down and in order to get over this hump right here you're gonna want to push up so it's not getting caught on this middle piece and just kind of work your way back and forth. Now that guy's in there, as you can see, this is good. And then for example, on both sides, so make sure you do both. You're gonna push these black things up, back in. You hear the snap there? push those in and then on this side right here just like you guys have taken off two 10 mil bolts we're gonna do this side and then we're gonna do the other side so take the bolt in the socket make sure that's pretty tight not over tight just pretty hand tight so once that side's done, make sure we do this other side. Pop this guy in. And then do the other bolt. So 
We put the headliner in. We have one of the clips in the rear. I'll show you guys do another one. So we put the one in the rear in to help hold up the back here. We still have to put the second one in. As you can see, the seats are up. We had connected the battery for the power seat on the driver's side. So we used it to help prop up the headliner so we can get this guy in. We also went around the headliner and Spencer had electrical tape certain things and the strands itself. This is for the rear windshield washer fluid. But we did that with the strands because when you go in, for example, here, you guys wanna be careful and when you're putting stuff up, you wanna make sure all the stuff gets tucked in there. You don't want all these strands hanging out. So even some electrical tape just to start holding them together. And then you're ideally gonna want two hands if someone's around to help you. Otherwise, again, use your seats and the headrest on them. That will help you guys as well. So I wanna throw this last clip in. And then we're gonna basically, how we installed, uninstalled everything, we're gonna install everything back in again. Sometimes it's easier, especially if you have a second set of hands to hold stuff up, but just like taking it apart, two rear clips in the back. So this is pretty good in there now and we can start working together. Once we start getting more stuff of the interior pieces together, it's gonna start holding up the headliners. And then at the end, we gotta wire everything and cut all these strands off as well. Be careful with your eyes. So we're gonna start up here now in the front of the car. It's gonna be ideal with two people. So reinstalling this, right? Make sure you guys put this back in where the sunglasses go. You're gonna weave this through this. Spencer already had connected this guy right here, if you can see that. There's also gonna be another connector eventually. It's gonna be ideal to have two hands so you can start pushing up the headliner and then the other person snap this guy back in. Okay, so the next part that we gotta do is we just gotta put this little clip or red clip here. There's multiple clips up here. You might have disconnected our motor to our sunroof. Just make sure you plug that one in as we just struggled to put it in. Um, just make sure you do that. Then we got this one for our sunroof controls along with our dimmer switch and everything else and the microphone that we never uh, unattached there. So we're gonna plug this guy in. And this guy you're gonna kind of push in forward and then everything should just kind of line back up so I lied to you here cool sunroof all opens we're all good or the uh, uh, sunglass holder all Lines up, our lights push in, everything works. Cool. Now we'll move on to the next step. So now Spencer's in the car. We are putting the sun visor back in. So he put this guy through and we gotta reconnect the connection. So the reason why Spencer's kind of holding this and we're starting here before any of the other trim is because once again, we gotta reconnect this guy right here so it's gonna be some finagling around, but you're gonna to wanna, to, you see that? Right here, you gotta reconnect that. So Spencer, if he needs to like move the headliner down a little bit and kind of move it around, not super much, and then boom, got that connection in. So we can get that guy in. And then it's gonna be T15s with the Torx bits to reattach the sun visor here. And we'll show you an interior shot of that. Now we can push in the uh, the driver A side A pillar here, just the covering. Here all the clicks go. That way it'll kind of help support this. And now Derek can let go of the headliner here. Now should be able to get going with this guy here. If you notice there's some tabs here that you gotta push through. Uh, we just might need to open up the cut a little bit here and get the tabs through just because we laid the new liner. Maybe we'll get lucky. Again, two, two 15 Torx bits here, and then we're gonna have to still put this guy in over here. But for this piece, there's two clips. It's a lot of finagling, 
And something that helped us was using, say, a flathead and putting it through one of the empty holes here, like this, to help line up that hole and try to push. It is nice having a second set of hands like Spencer. And then you're gonna take the other two, two T15s, and then we're gonna put the last one in. So now both of those are in. We also took off the cap here, the small cap that goes over it. So we took this guy off just because it was in my way and it was sliding on the rail here. So this just has an opening here and we're gonna slide this back on. If it's not in your way, you don't have to take it off, but for us, it was giving me a little bit of trouble just sliding around like that. And then you just push this back up like this. And that clips back in like that. And then we are good to go to do this piece next. The final step for this guy is this guy right here. Make sure with these relief cuts, you guys do leave a good amount of room. Again, T15 here. You can kind of see the little edge hole here where one of these goes in, there's two. So I'm gonna put this guy in. And it's gonna be a little loose. I'm gonna take this guy here with a T15 and I'm gonna drill her in. And then that's good like that. Sun visor will go right back into place. And boom, that's one. We're gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing for connecting it and then the pillar side. Next is the passenger door handle in here. It has one side with a spring hinge on the right here. So that's gonna to be towards the rear of the car, as well as these flaps, which cover the T15 bolts. They're gonna be facing down when you put these back in. It might be a little bit of struggle, as well as with these holes, depending on how your relief cuts are with the fabric, that you're gonna to have to move away strands or anything that's up here. You might need to use a little flathead, something like that. But you're gonna get these clips in, put the two T15s here and then pull these guys down and then that's gonna finish this handle piece. After stalling with this guy, just because of how the fabric sits, this last bolt's in, make sure that goes down, and then boom, you got the oak handle back in. Next, we're gonna work on doing this piece here, and then do the same on the other side, as well as we're gonna reattach the weather stripping. So the next step we have to do is put the trim pieces back on the B-pillar. You'll notice this lip here, and there's like a little channel here. You want to put this back lip behind the headliner, so it kind of looks something like this. That, and you'll just want to push. This piece is also spring-loaded, and that will attach to your seatbelt thing here. Just go into place, so that way you can move your seatbelt up and down. Okay. On this bottom piece, snap into place like that. Cool. And now you'll need to put your T20 Torx bit back into the hole in the hood. Okay. All right. And then that airbag cover you took off before, just slide right back in, like so. And now the D pillar is good to go. Now we're just going to put that back on. Just a little push in on the edges here. 
Nothing really special, no real trick to it. Let's make sure it's tight up in all of the corners. The next thing we got to do is put in these uh, coat hangers or whatever you get call these. Um, we're just doing these after or before we do the rear just so we have the wiggle room should we need it. Because the rear is just clips whereas this is a bolt. I'm just going to fit that into place. Close the hat and there you go. So the next thing we have to do is take the clip for the rear dome light, plug this guy in. You want to kind of feed it back like so and then it should just snap into place to get the angle right. There you go. Now your rear dome light is installed. So the next part we got to do uh, to do this rear C pillar here, we're going to have to put this top part in first and then we can do this guy. And then the last piece we'll do is this guy, which is the, uh, I guess that maybe that's the C pillar, not exactly sure. <laughs> or the front C pillar, re sear pillar, and then the top connecting piece. But we're gonna do the bigger of the, or the medium piece of the three here. I'm just gonna put this guy in. Make sure you get this tab underneath the headliner. And just line up the clips. Pull the weather strip over the top. Cool. Next piece we have to do is the bigger piece here, which covers your seat belt and basically everything else on the rear of the seat pillar. And we'll just snap into place. If you want to pull your weather strip over the top, might be easier if you remove it, but ours was glued down. I didn't want to pull it off. So, yep, we'll come over to the front side here. Just clip in all of these guys here. Cool. Then we'll take this guy here and we'll put him up here. There'll be holes for the clips there. Good snap. And then we got a another middle piece here, and that's just going to go up in the top here, connect the two. Also notice the foam goes towards the edge of the window there. So then we have three bolts here, which are gonna go into the side here. One there. We have the one here. Cool. Now I'll come around to the back side here. We have the one in here. So now we're just gonna put the headrest back in the rear. Make sure that latches, seatbelt forward. And then we just have the door weather stripping here. I'm just gonna put that back in. Here. 
Okay, so what I've kind of started here is wrapping up the electrical tape. Um, reason we're doing this is we don't want the light to seep through on the edges there if we're at a show or whatever reason. Um, so now we're just gonna wrap all this up in electrical tape and this will also help protect it when we fish it through this little channel here from the sharp edges. Uh, you'll see that as we go. Um, so I'm just gonna finish electrical taping this. So after all of the sides are back together, you got the dome light in. I kind of really doesn't matter what order you do it in, just as long as you get the head or the headliner supported. I'm gonna put the projector in here. So uh, for the Focus ST, I figured on the ST3 of the subwoofer on the passenger side of the car, so you'll have all the space on the driver's side to put this projector here. There's a little channel that we fished all of the strands through they'll come out uh, the bottom here kind of by the driver's side tail light so we mounted or we inserted the strands in the projector here and we're going to 3m tape about right here 3m tape that guy down and we're going to fish the cable this is the extension that i bought separately off amazon which we'll link in the description below so i get it behind that trim piece here And we'll tuck it in. We'll go on the other side of the car. I'm going to fish it underneath this latch here for the seats. there and we'll come on the back side of this trim piece here so all I've done is I've just tucked it behind here you can kind of see the wire going in between this trim piece here just tucked it underneath there and then what we'll do is we'll fish it underneath the seat back here So uh, we fished it around the trim piece on the back here. So this piece here that we didn't have to remove, not the free floating one here, all the way down there. Make sure you go behind the seat belt. We fished it underneath here. So you can see, pulled the little excess out. Make sure you stay clear of this clip here so you can actually put the seat down and you can have people sit back here again. Then we just fished it to the middle of the seat and we're gonna go underneath the, um, the floor mats in the center of the rear. Uh, I have WeatherTech floor mats so it covers the hump in the back seat there. And we're gonna fish it up to the center console as soon as we get tidied up in the back. So it's for the wiring on this, since I am doing the cigarette outlet, or cigarette outlet uh, we have, or at least on the ST3, I'm not 100% on the ST1 or ST2. We have one in the center console, so I have it Routing through the little pass through here, just straight down next to the side of the car. Kind of see it right here. I have it going underneath my weather mat and then the port that we fished through earlier. Just gonna connect those. Since the battery is not plugged in, obviously the lights aren't coming on, but we will go plug the battery in, tuck these wires underneath the seat so this is a little tighter up here, and we should be good to go.
Okay, so we're done with installing everything on the interior here. Uh, next step now is cutting the, uh, the strands flush. You want to leave about one to two millimeters outside so that way it's brighter and it's not as um, dark, I guess. Um, that way they're also kind of flush in the headliner. You don't see them from the outside. Uh, don't try and push super hard with the uh, tools on there. Uh, just a pair of side cutters, uh, nail clippers, anything can do this. Um, yeah, uh, we also have a bit of fuzz and stuff all over the headliner. Uh, once you're done cutting all the strands, you can just take a lint roller and uh, go over it softly and you should be able to get it pretty clean. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna get going on this and uh, we'll check back in once we're done. All right guys, as you've seen from the showcase of the lights and the headliner, we're done with the car. Car's all back together as you can see. Uh, really stoked with how it's turned out. It's been something I've wanted to do for the past three years since I bought the car. Yeah, really happy about it. Uh, yeah, just a dream come true. If you guys did like the video or you found it helpful, please drop a like. This project is a super time consuming task but it's really worth it then. I did it on my car, I went through the hassle as well. It's not impossible, it's not the hardest thing to do. Again, it's just very time consuming. All right, so we'll see you guys in the next video.